Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Our goal uh, in this segment is to take the first steps toward a mastery of uh, the concepts behind biological membranes, the structural principles based on uh, on which these important structures are based. So remember what we our, our basic operating context here. Uh, genetic design information builds sophisticated tools. Um, uh, many of them are uh, catalysts, macromolecular catalysts, and those catalysts in turn can build other macromolecules, including the components of lipid membranes, our subject today, bi biological membranes. And thus, biological membranes are indirectly the products of uh, adaptive design, that is, natural selection shapes the tools that build the, the uh, lipid uh, bilayer. So when we look at their structures today, we're really looking at the structures of adapted machines, things that are designed to do specific things. All right, so let's zero in on lipid bilayers as biological uh, the, as the basis of biological membranes. And before I launch into this, I want to really focus your attention on something I want to re-emphasize over the next couple of minutes several times. That when we looked at proteins earlier, how macromolecular uh, uh, structure is defined in an aqueous environment by the interaction between the thermodynamics of the interaction between the polymer, in this case a protein, and water and itself. So you end up with this, this characteristic structure. What I want you to be conscious of throughout the next few minutes is the biological membranes are formed on exactly the same basis. That is, it's all about the simple laws of thermodynamics and the structures that those laws allow to uh, form. All right, so as we said, uh, proteins fold up as a result of having buried hydrophobic components and exposed hydrophilic components. Therefore, a particular amino acid sequence tends to fold up in a particular way. So lipid structures are going to play by exactly those same rules. Let's look at uh, um, the kinds of structures that lipid molecules will form. Let's first start with the simple fatty acid. So remember fatty acids, uh, see the structure at the left here, have this hydrophilic head group, which is surrounded by a large hydration layer, and then they have this aliphatic, um, uh, hydrophobic, long hydrophobic tail. And notice how we've diagrammed them here. Let me pull those back. Notice how we've diagrammed them. And so they're, in effect, uh, sterically, their van der Waals envelope is sort of triangular. That is, you have this large hydrated hydrophilic uh, head group, and then tapering down to the a long, thinner hydrophobic tail. As a result of that, they pack together as a result of hydrophobic interactions in a very characteristic way called a micelle, shown here. So the triangular shape, um, or actually conical shape in three dimensions, triangular here in two dimensions, the conical shape causes them to pack uh, their closest packed configuration to be a spherical micelle of the sort that's diagrammed here. And this is the lowest free energy state, uh, just like the lowest free energy state of a folded polypeptide chain. This is the lowest free energy state of a uh, fatty acid in solution at its above its so-called critical micelle concentration. Uh, these little spherical micelles, of course, are not particularly useful biological objects. We need to build long, essentially infinitely long um, lipid membranes. How is that done? So to understand that, remember the amphiphilic, the larger amphiphilic composite lipids that we talked about last time in the last segment on lipid chemistry. They are amphipathic, that, or I'm sorry, amphiphilic, that is they have charged head groups and long um, tails like the fatty acids do, but the long tails, because there are multiple fatty acids and because they're kinked, uh, they're, they're, they're bulky. So in fact, if we look at the van der Waals um, uh, shape of these composite lipids, they're more square than triangular. So let's actually put them side by side. So the van der Waals uh, envelope of a fatty acid is shown at right here. It's conical or triangular. And the, uh, a, the composite lipids, not only are they a little bigger, but they're, uh, the, they're square. They're, they're uh, rectangle, cub cuboidal in three dimensions. So as a result, they, their lowest free energy state is to pack together in this bilayer structure that you're looking at right here. And this bilayer structure is the underlying structure behind essentially all biological membranes all the time, everywhere, certainly including animal biological membranes. So the hydrophilic head groups, remember they often have charge or they are, they're full of uh, 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 polysaccharides, for example, in the case of gangliosides. Very hydrophilic head groups projecting out either into the extracellular environment or back into the cytosol, the, the aqueous environments on either side of the membrane in the case of the plasma membrane. And then the inner core of the plasma membrane, membrane is highly hydrophobic. So various other lipids, so these are things like uh, um, uh, sphingolipids and uh, glycerophospholipids of the sort that we talked about in the last segment, 
forming the structure that you're looking at here, but they create that uh, highly hydrophobic environment where their fatty acid side chains are hanging down and filling the space. The, into that hydrophobic environment, various other hydrophobic components will, f will slide. Among, we'll see some specific examples in a few minutes, but among the most important of those is cholesterol that we talked again about in the last segment in detail. This compact, very hydrophobic uh, um, ring system slides into this environment between the fatty acid side chains of these um, uh, uh, sphingolipids and phospholipids and the membrane. And so the, the properties of membranes are then, their, their physical properties are determined by the compositions of the, of the uh, amphiphilic lipids and by the addition of these uh, more neutral lipids, particularly, most importantly, cholesterol. Okay, all right. So let's now uh, remind ourselves of how central these membranes are to the structure of the cells that make us up. So this is, again, a, a sort of stereotypical animal cell. The plasma membrane, the outer surface of the cell, is one of these structures, is a, is a lipid bilayer uh, of, of exactly this form. But so are the membranes that, it, that enfold the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope actually has a double-layered membrane around it. The endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus that we'll return to in more detail in a moment are also membrane inclusions or an often anastomosing networks of tubes and, and disc-shaped membrane inclusions inside cells. And the mitochondrion, which I've blown up here, is actually a double-layered membrane. Notice it has both an inner and an outer membrane. And in fact, the compositions of those inner and outer membranes are significantly different from one another and play a role in the metabolic functions of mitochondria that we'll talk about in later segments. So biological organisms need to be able to build membranes, to build membranes with specific properties, and to build them where they want to. Well, our understanding of membrane construction is not complete, but we understand a great deal about it or uh, some of the essential features of it, and that's what we'll sort of be talking about as we go forward for the next few, uh, uh, for the rest of this segment. We're going to be looking at the, the structure of the membrane itself and the structure of the things that get stuck into the membrane, particularly proteins that get stuck into the membrane. All right, so let's f uh, continue to look at the structure of the membrane itself first. So let's look at something fundamental. So here is a, a, a couple of a lipid bilayers. The half bilayer is called a leaflet, by the way. So notice that when a, 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 a phospholipid or a sphingolipid is uh, inserted in the membrane, the likelihood of its flipping its orientation so that its head group goes from the outside of the cell to the inside, uh, for example, or vice versa, is very low. <coughs> Why is that? Because in order to do that, you have to drag the hydrophilic head group through the hydrophobic membrane domain and project it to the outside. I in some cases, there are specific enzymes, sometimes uh, sort of flippantly called flippases, uh, which will catalyze this process in a, in a specific way. But in an unca when left uncatalyzed, this process is quite slow. Uh, what does that mean? That means the composition of the two leaflets in the membrane can also differ from one another. So we don't, cells don't only build different bilayers, but they can build bilayers whose two leaflets are significantly different if there's an adaptive reason to do so. The other feature of, uh, of uh, um, um, amphiphilic lipids moving around in the membrane is that while they can't m m uh, move between leaflets very well, they move within a leaflet very well, that they're diffusing in a, a two-dimensional space. And in fact, they do the, the lipid bilayer is highly dyna dynamic, sometimes called a fluid mosaic. It's highly dynamic in ways that we certainly do not fully understand yet, with different lipids moving around uh, uh, quite rapidly, as I'll show you in a moment, and perhaps even forming local aggregates of different composition with different purposes. Um, and, and some very interesting science remains to be done to figure that out. So here, let me give you a, a couple of examples of the experiments that give us confidence that the lipid uh, membrane, at least the plasma membrane, is highly fluid environment in which things can move around very rapidly. As we'll see later, they don't always, but they can. So this is a very simple and elegant early experiment in which a human and a mouse cell line were uh, differentially labeled with a red and a green fluorescent uh, membrane protein. We'll talk about how proteins get stuck into membranes in a moment and one, again, fluorescing red, one fluorescing green. You can then use a, a, a virus in this case or other tools to fuse those cells to make a hybrid cell, which now consists of the membrane from both cells. What you see at the initial fusion is two half cells, one red, one green. But very quickly, within a matter of hours at uh, uh, standard incubation temperature, the two fluors... Uh,